Hi, everyone. I'm Rick Benson. Your today is Tuesday, February 28th. Welcome to this week's In the No Trader show. We've got a quick show today. I want to concentrate on one subject and one subject only, and that is understanding the macro picture to trade the micro picture and how important that is. So that'll be the basis to what we talk about this week. However, before we get into that, let me review for you, especially for those who are new to watching our YouTube videos, let me review for you what we have to offer from In The No Trader. So we have, let me, I'll go and step here. We have a weekly ETF tactical trader report. This comes out generally on Thursday evenings. It goes through the whole macro picture. What we will actually be talking about today is uh, the crux of this report. And it includes looking at the bond market, the US dollar, the commodity markets, um, how they interrelate. And then we specifically get down to the S&P, give you my big picture and short term picture of what I expect in the market. Uh, That helps you set the tone to everything that you do uh, going forward. We then give you a brand new ETF trading idea each week, as well as update all open positions we have from prior weeks until we close them out. Again, that's the weekly ETF tactical trade report. Anybody who's trading, um, let's say short to medium term, this is for you. We also have um, a monthly report that's called the 711 uh, report, and this is a different product with a different goal. This is intended to outperform the S&P 500 by being invested in no more than seven of the 11 macro spider ETFs like XLK, XLP, XLE. There are 11 different sectors to the market. Our goal is to outperform the, the broad market by essentially removing four of the 11 sectors each month uh, hopefully identifying the underperformers such that we would then um, outperform the market. And to give you a sense of how uh, we did in 2022, 11 of 12 months, we outperformed the S&P for a total of just over 6% better by following the advice of the 7-Eleven report than being invested in spiders themselves. Um, since we started this going back now 30 months, we have 30 months, we have outperformed by over 10%. And in January, uh, we actually had our worst month, no surprise, given the massive shifts that took place uh, in the sectors to start the year. Uh, we trailed by 1.96%. That's essentially double any other month we've had as far as a loss. So we started off the year um trailing and in fact uh tonight is a new 7-eleven report so we'll actually after the close today we'll tabulate results and see how we did in february um the performance over time and this is you know month to month just accumulates but it's you know i don't really care on any given month i care about how we do over time um the results we have being up over 10% relative to the S&P in 30 months puts us in the top decile of all people who do this. Um, and if you can be in the top 10% of something that you do, um, you're good at what you do. And we continue uh, to, to have a real edge in how we look at the markets and, and how we formulate which sectors to be in um, each month. To consistently be able to watch my videos as they come out uh subscribe to the in the no trader channel on youtube so go to youtube.com slash in the no trader hit the subscribe button and then when you log into youtube uh the most recent video will be right there on top also follow me on twitter and the handle is at in the no trader
So let's go back here and talk about this idea of understanding the macro picture to trade the micro picture. So what am I talking about? There has always been interrelationships between the asset classes. Sometimes um, the relationship is a positive correlation. Sometimes it's a negative correlation. But it's rarely that they all trade on their own and their own fundamentals without um, affecting other markets and the other big markets. So, for instance, it would be um, to your detriment to be trading the stock market without having a good sense of what the bond market is indicating at any given time. It would be a bad um, or let's say not to your advantage to be trading the bond market if you weren't also looking at what the US dollar is doing. And it would be kind of unwise to look at perhaps the commodity markets and try to play those without understanding the dollar and how that relates to those markets. And then all of this, stocks, well, let's say bonds, dollar commodities, and how they affect the stock market. So that's why I want to talk about understanding the macro picture in order to trade the market you're trading. And I'll assume most of you trade stocks, that that's the bulk of what you do. And whether they're individual stocks or ETFs, um, I suspect more of you who are watching this video consistently trade the stock market than you do the bond market, than you do the foreign, uh, you know, foreign exchange or commodities. But those three markets, commodities, foreign exchange, and the bond market dramatically impact the stock market. So if you're trading stocks and you're not looking at these other markets and how they relate to what's going on in the stock market, you're trading with not only, you know, or, or you're trying to fight in a, a, a sword match, not only with one hand behind your back, which is actually not uncommon in, if you ever watch fencing, but it's like having two hands behind your back and trying to win the game. Um, and that's really hard. So let's take a look at, um, you know, let me switch to my charts. So here is the dollar index. Um, I think every charting system has this. It's usually the ticker is DXY. It's the US dollar index. Uh, there are some other dollar indexes uh, that you know, the Wall Street Journal has their own index. But basically, this is the benchmark of the US dollar. And its major component is the euro, uh, followed by the Japanese yen. But it's a basket of foreign currencies against the dollar. When this chart moves higher, it means the dollar is strong, and generally the other currencies are weak. And when this chart is going down, it means the dollar is weak, and the other currencies are strong. Is there any reason to look at this if you're trading the market? So let's go back to, let's highlight this bar here. So this vertical line, let me see if I can make it a little wider. So yeah, so it's easier to see. So let's do this. There we go. That's the beginning. Uh, that's January of 2022. So last year. So if you think about the stock market, we know that last year was a really poor performance in the stock market. The S&P down about 20%, NASDAQ down 30% plus. What did the dollar do last year? Well, if we go to January, and it's the first week of 2022, the dollar was pretty much strong and finally peaked in the fall. So dollar strength was actually one of the major catalysts for why stocks sold off last year. So 
playing the trends, understanding the trends in the dollar was a successful piece of the formula in order to know that stocks were likely going to tail off. Now, historically, does it always mean that when the dollar rallies, stocks go down? No, but it has been, um, certainly there are phases and times that there is a strong correlation, um, and or in this case, you can say a strong inverse correlation, strong dollar, weaker stocks. Notice that in the last week in September, the dollar made the high for the year, kind of consolidated in October, and then it's been selling off until recently. So if we look approximately here, let's do this and do the same thing. We're going to modify this. We're going to give it a nice heavy weighting. So there's the week that made the high, right? So all of last year through October 1st, essentially, dollar up, a couple pullbacks along the way, but dollar up and stocks down. Do you remember that over the course of last year, we had a major low put in in June, um, and we had the peak in August to stocks. Notice that in August, we sold off in the dollar, which was good for stocks. We bought them the week of August 8th. That is the same time that stocks hit their mid-August peak. So the decline here was the same time stocks were rallying. Then the dollar started moving up again and stocks started going down. We get to the fall when we get the consolidation and then into november and through the end of the year and even into january the dollar has been selling off and now recently for the last few weeks it's been going up what did stocks do from october to uh the early part of this year stocks rallied strongly Right, we had a heck of a great start to this year. January was one of the biggest months on on in the stock market history for returns. The same time the dollar was falling this year. Then, oh, actually, before I continue with that, let me show you something of how important it is to do your analysis. So I'm going to simply put up one model that we use, which is uh, Tom DeMarc's propulsion model, and for over a month before we ever got there, I was telling in the no trader clients that 112.63 was a key level and area in the dollar. And we closed above it in uh, September for a week, consolidated, and then fell. This is where we turned neutral the dollar and took off all our dollar long bets. And we get this big decline. Where did we tell in the no trader clients that the dollar would likely bottom? I said between 102 and 100.5. We got to 100.82 on the low. I identified this level well before it ever got there. Now we've been playing the dollar on the long side and took partial profits um, a week and a half ago right near the high of this move. Understanding which way the dollar moves right now is really important to understanding which way the stocks move. So that's the dollar. So obviously, if I'm going to trade stocks, I want to do analysis on the dollar and understand what's going on there. Let's take a look at the US 10 year. And I can get rid of these vertical lines because um, going to have a slightly different story, but not hugely so. What happened last year as the dollar was rallying? So we go back to the first week. Again, let's make this nice and big. In fact, what I can do here 
is we'll set that as a default so now all those lines will be nice and big so as rates moved up last year what did stocks do stocks sold down what did the dollar do the dollar moved up so as interest rates in the u.s moved up more people were willing to own the u.s dollar you collect more interest rate there's a point in the year in which um rates came off that was from when the june low in stocks went to the august high it's the exact inverse of this move 100 percent negative correlation yields came off stocks went up when yields bottomed in august stocks peaked in august and we go into November. When did stocks bottom? In October. They um, rates peaked in the third week in October. So if we look here, this is very similar to what we saw in the dollar. So dollar and bond yields went the same way, stocks went the opposite way. Then, recently, in the beginning, first week in February, yields make their bottom. What happened in February? Stocks made their peak a few weeks ago. And stocks have been selling off, and yields have been moving up. There's a strong correlation, or inverse correlation, but very strong right now in these three markets. To trade the stocks, which again, I believe the bulk of you do, without understanding what the dollar and the bond market are doing, is really trying you know, to fight a battle with your hands tied. And you can't get your fists up for, to punch. So the, the, not just the main message of this week, but the only message of this week and we're not going to do charts or anything else. The only message of this week is if you're going to trade stocks, you've got to know what the dollar market is doing and you've got to know what the interest rate market is doing in the US. So follow TNX, follow um, DXY, and anything else in the macro picture that helps give you a clue to how stocks are going to trade. Trying to trade Apple or Tesla or anything else without understanding the context of the bigger picture of these other major influences to how the stock market is going to trade just puts you at a disadvantage. So do your analysis, put your time and effort into also looking at charts of the dollar of the interest rate market of what commodities are doing there is often a strong correlation or strong inverse correlation to how all these trade and that's the lesson for this week i hope you enjoyed our show i'm rick bensenor and you've been watching in the no trader have a good one